I guess the last time in Ireland it was a noon kickoff too, right? Uh, actually, was a uh, was Ish. the uh, Boston College game a noon kickoff? Twenty sixteen. I don't know. Were you at that game? I, I was not. I was not part of the Ireland crew. Ah oh, man. I remember we kind of got up kind of early for that game just to like do the watch party and couch. So mm-hmm. it was probably like a noon local, if I had to guess. Is what happened? Yes. This is the Experience Podcast with me and someone else. What is up? Hello, I'm back. It is good to see you again, Chase. Ah, uh, see me. Ah, uh, uh, funny. Well, it is what it is. But yeah, man, I mean, how about them jackets, right? We, uh, as you have pointed out, we do not appear to be as terrible as we've been in previous years. That has nothing to do with the firing of Jeff Collins and the uh, ascendancy of Brett Key. Oh, yeah, totally. Nothing to do with that. <laughs> nah, but yeah, how about Tyler Santucci's uh, calling a pretty good game on defense? Mm. Oh, that was a weak link for us last year. My God. Uh, well, we appear to have learned how to tackle without using the uh, the good old arm tackle technique. Oof. That's a good so one. that's yeah. uh, we possibly have a defense this year. Um, I had no idea that DJ Wingalili, Wingalele, whatever, would be the <laughs> QB for the uh, Knolls, but uh, the Criminals are not looking too good this year. I don't think they'll be a third in the country anymore. Were you expecting Brock Glenn? Uh, who's that? Uh, the quarterback that played in the ACC championship, and uh, if you ask me, kind of sucked. Oh, I didn't watch it much. I, I, the, the, I watched some of the college games last year, but I was busy with the other ones, and I don't know. The DJ yeah, the, was he was he the, he was the Knowles quarterback, right? Yeah, now he's the Knowles quarterback. But first he was at Clemson, then he was at Oregon State for a year, oh, and then that, he came wait, to FSU. Oh, DJ, right? Yeah. Yeah, the other guy, I don't know. The other guy was, oh, he's like that, the third string backup guy that, uh, what's his face guy? I forget the, wasn't he like the originally USF guy? I don't remember. UCF guy. Um. Mackenzie Milton? Yeah, yeah, wasn't he the QB for FSU? No, no, I'm, I, I don't remember where Mackenzie end, ended up, but like. He. Travis. Some, I don't remember the guy. Jordan the guy, Travis was the, was, yeah, was right. him. Right, sure. and then he got injured, and then. The injury, uh, once that injury happens, I or this season's over, and they somehow won and made the fucking playoff anyway and got obliterated, so. Um, yeah, no, How I much didn't. of that you suppose had to do with all them starters leaving? Uh, a lot, but they were, you know, they were, they sucked ass once their QB and we got injured. So, you know. Yeah, good point. All the Lawrence Tolof, Tofili, and Keon Coleman's in the world can't save you if you know don't have a quarterback that can get the ball to him, or an offensive coordinator that won't, or a play caller that won't bash his head against the wall. Like my God, watching the ACC championship last year was actually like torture. Yeah, I, I truthfully don't remember. I watched a little bit of it and then I uh, stopped. <laughs> Yeah, that was the move. That was the move, honestly. But I mean, yeah, the the, the defense looked a lot better. Um, Buster Faulkner is still Buster Faulkner, but he looked like Paul Johnson on that drive on the, in that game. Um, I, I guess we're gonna run our quarterback uh, King. We're gonna run him a lot because uh, damn, those run attempts. But hey, I'm, I'm okay if, uh, with that. Why throw a ball when run when run ball uh, work work fine? 
uh, until you need to throw a ball, and then he seems to be able to throw. Oh, yeah. Um, he'll have to beat UGA a couple of times before we put him on the tier of Justin Thomas, though. Uh, yeah, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll, I'll settle for UGA victory. You think I can actually do it this year? This year? Fuck no. Uh, hopefully every year after that, pretty easily. Uh, are you assuming Kirby Smart takes, takes an NFL job? I'm assuming that they're obvious fraud and, uh, a whole bunch of shit that's wrong with their, uh, frankly decades of their, uh, <clears throat> sticky transactional dealings under the table catch up with them and their natties get exposed as fake. Something, something, my eyes have seen the glory of the NCAA? Mm, it never was the NCAA, but you know, there's but other you, ways of, uh, you, you know the rest from. of it. You know the rest yeah. of it. Speaking of which, what are your thoughts on NIL? NIL? Yeah. Uh, useless shut. Really? Yeah. Doesn't do what it says it does. And that's the, and that is? I, I don't know. I haven't looked in, I, I looked at like a fucking Wikipedia thing or an article one time and I was like, nope. Let me look them back up and see. It's been, it's been months. NIL. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, there's a Photoshop image immediately. Uh, college recruiting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Name, image, likeness. Yeah. Yeah. Don't pay athletes for the, uh, don't pay athletes. Don't pay athletes. Don't pay athletes. But we need to pay athletes. But they're students. Yeah. I was like, and, on the uh, one hand, they're students, yeah. but on the other, uh, they, they bring the call, the university a lot of money. Depends and on which university you are. Donations and political bullshit. More, more actually than people realize. Uh, and this is something I believe for a while was the, uh, the athlete to, uh, you know, college money pipeline, but it really it's, it's, it's the corporations, it's the political bullshit behind the scenes, and that's tied to the Fed literally in, t- in terms of printing really? our money, so. Well, you got, you got to think about it, right? Because the Fed literally prints money all day, every day, and they okay. destroy money when they shouldn't need to, when they don't need to. Um, okay. And so, when they manipulate the money market, the the donors to a university change, and so the the university system changes every time you do that. What so about it's, all it's, those? It's all that uh, sticky bullshit. What about all those uh, grants? Oh, those are all fucking fraudulent. The whole, the whole like grant, and uh, I said this because I, I worked, I did the, you know, a little bit of the research, and the whole like, like the NSF, if you look into them, it's a whole bunch of fraud. It's just they, they pick and choose things that they think will come, like ideas that will come to market because they're they're a business. It's best to think of the NSF as a business, right? Because it's a business. It ceased to be science. Very long ago, when it started helping, the, or, and if you didn't know this, it actually facilitated the suppression of many academic articles that made it to nature. Some of them, um, like uh, think of like reactor technologies and shit, but they're suppressed because the NSF controls your funding. Um, the problem is the NSF never, because they were a political body and a financial body more than a science body. What they did was suppress a whole bunch of shit. Let's selectively modulate what research comes through. And bam, you've got like Microsoft getting grants back in the day. Um, but then you don't get like this, you know, what about a robotics technology that we could, uh, I don't know, maybe think to? Nope. Is that what, like Neuralink? Oh, something like that. I'm a big believer in that technology. All right. All right. I think that's just on the horizon, actually. You think uh, anybody at tech might be able to uh, experiment with that? Because I know oh, uh, right now, gener- like Gen AI is the thing. Like Gen AI, large mm-hmm. language models, whatever whatever rags are, like that. That's, that's the thing. That's the thing now. Um, well, I mean, you know better than I do, but like a lot of that neural network shit is just uh, Lego breaking a bunch of other simpler models together, and it's overcomplicated because they need academic grants. Like it's and math. Again, it's, it, it, it's just math. It's literally just a matrix, bro. But you know, it's, it's very math and linear algebra. 
it's a matrix, and occasionally you stick two matrices together. And then what is a matrix? It's two dimensional. But we got to make it a tensor. What is a tensor? A larger matrix. That's how your computer yeah. calculates it. Two dimensions. Oh. No, we thought about that. But yeah. Um, uh, but visualize hate- it. Visualize it wrong, by the way, because we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. <laughs> I, d- Listen, fucking- I did not yeah. like linear algebra, so. It's unfortunate because it's one of the more intuitive branches. I mean, everything's a matrix, and then every all the terminology in linear is just let's slice let's slice up different things of a matrix. It is a matrix, bro. That is linear algebra. It's a matrix, bro. And then get ready for uh-huh. this. Uh, you know how like astrophysics? Uh, you, have you ever heard the term tensor or tensor calculus? Uh, I've only heard of Tensor in the context of TensorFlow, which is a Python yeah. library for AI ML. Tensors, which is built on tensors. Get ready okay. for this. It's a matrix, bro. So, see, here's the problem with, like, comp sci research that I, from the little that I did, relatively speaking. Mm-hmm. It's just a matrix, bro. It's not that fancy. But, unfortunately, we got to make it fancy because we need grant money, so you just baffle them with bullshit and jargon, and they pay you money. So our TensorFlow, it's built on this, you know, and I, I, don't, I didn't read the original paper behind it from, I think, was that Google or was that, I forget who came up with TensorFlow at TBH, but um, I think it was Google. Um, cause, uh, yes, you'd be correct. PyTorch didn't, like, a, there's like a Facebook team that worked on PyTorch. Um, and it was, it's just, it's just total bullshit. It's, it's all matrices and it's, um, the problem with like, it's like, and you, I'm sure you did like, uh, did, did you TA or, uh, do anything, do any teaching at tech? I wish, but no. I, Cause I wish I could have too, but, um, I, I was going to say that like, this is just handed down from professors. Teach this complicated bullshit because we don't know what we're doing either, but we need money. That's that's what academia comes all – it's this fucking loop, this constant cycle. Um, it comes back to the grant money. It comes back to the donors. It's it's a disaster. I don't know. We had a few professors that could actually teach. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. Lee could teach. Ramachandran could teach. Uh, these are my C- old CS professors. Uh, Dr. Sweat uh, could teach. Dr. Sweat was great. Um, I'm thinking, who else is a really good professor? Outside of those guys, I think the classes are... Riddell was good. Uh, Dr. Riddell was good. He's my intro to AI professor. Outside of that, like the the courses I really enjoyed was not the teacher teaching, but really just the teaching, the professor uh, facilitating discussion. So Right, right, right. Um, um, that's why I really liked, uh, Dr. S- uh, Peter, Peter Swire, who's, um, mm-hmm. in this, I think he's in Scheller. Uh, he's, he's kind of a law guy, a privacy law guy. Ha! What is your Fourth Amendment rights and how can we violate them? That's Google. Oof. And Facebook. Fortunately, the idiots who collect the data are too fucking incompetent to use the data. Did you see, did you see the, uh, did you ever see any of, like, the WikiLeaks shit or the, um, uh, what was it? Um, I'm blanking on it real quick. Uh, but it's the, uh, fuck, I'm actually blanking on it. Uh, the Twitter files? Those, those matter too, but it's the, uh, like the WikiLeaks shit, the leaks on, um, like the prison program, the backdoor, the backdoor shit, the metadata farming, and the, um, Homeland Security connection and fucking the NSA. That's that's what I was. Oh, NSA you're talking was, about Snowden. You're talking about uh, Snowden. Snowden was related. Snowden's related, but uh, it's it, it's all that network of of information that um yeah it's really fortunate that they're incompetent as fuck because they did collect data that would be useful to spy on people. Now. Good luck telling them that. <laughs> I, I ain't gonna say nothing. Well, you, you don't have to say anything. It's just, uh, it's it's just true, and it it pisses me off because um, we have the Fourth Amendment, and that used yes. to matter at some point, and it's not. And, and here's a thing: it's like good people. This is what pisses me off about like Google and and Facebook and all these companies. Good people work there. Plenty of good people work there. Yeah. And they are told, you'll be fired unless you fix shit for us. 
You know what I mean? And unless you what and and you and the, they will tell you you need to collect data and make recommender systems and shit like that that will harvest people's data data. And thankfully it ends up being metadata a lot of times, but you know, good luck telling them that. The problem is is like, hey, that is a fundamental violation of the ethics that I believe in, not least of all what I was taught. And what that ends up being for you and for me and for anybody working at a tech company or whatever, I didn't actually work in one, but, you know, is, okay, so I've got to go along with a fundamental violation of my personal ethics for your profit, your profit model. And they, I swear to God, I if a human being could glitch, that would absolutely be the case with some of these people. Because it's like, wait a minute, I didn't think, of, I thought of that, wait, wait, huh? Huh? Are you talking about the whole cognitive dissonance thing, or? Oh, partially. Or it's not cognitive, yeah, it's, it's double think. It's, it's both. I think it's cognitive dissonance, it's double think, it's things that get your mind, I uh, should get your mind thinking, but some people ain't uh, the most uh, mentacious of gentlemen. Fair enough. I forgot where I was going with this. But I'll say, that, that took a hell of a turn. How do we go from football to matrices to, uh, Facebook or some shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's, that's, um, that's the experience. Am I right? <laughs> speaking of which, uh, Daniel, uh, we're 20, we're 20 fucking minutes into your podcast and we just monopolized it again. How are you doing? I'm, I can't ruin the flow, you know? I, I just, this is your show. We do this all the time. Yeah, but they, they, the listeners hear enough about me. They hear me every week, you know? So. Oh. You guys are more interesting. I'm just kind of. So. Well, there, there are plenty of there's plenty of things around the earth on interest in. Um, you know, I yeah. think, you know, when I was looking, because I, I was thinking similar tech thoughts when I was uh, after I watched the tech FSU game, I was like, huh, I wonder, I wonder if they've built, you know, they got the coda shit going now or the coda building um wonder if they've gotten you know serious advancements because you know it doesn't it seems like we had an advancements in neural networks for a couple years there and they just like stopped it's gen ai now gen ai is the shit haha <laughs> eventually artificial general intelligence don't Ge- look oh, for anything i'm a generative general ai like chat gpt but yeah i mean uh, a nice attempt but a toy I mean, eventually, like, data lakes and data warehouses and AI-ready data is going to become the thing. Um, and just, like, harvest, you mentioned harvesting metadata. It's like, you put all that metadata in, like, a central place and you run a bunch of uh, models on it. That might become a thing. Well, theor- that's a good way of putting it, actually, because theoretically, that's already a thing. But the problem is, you know, the average person is fucking retarded and can't understand math. And the average person ends up in positions of authority and of, well, authority, uh, where they don't belong. And so you try to make models for these people. And ultimately, cause you know, I worked for, I worked for a flooring company and I did math for them basically in fucking mm-hmm. Excel, um, doing data, you know, you know, big data, bullshit, um, big bullshit. But, it, you can make all the models on a whole bunch of, fu- and, and the data are always fucked up because it's, it's a meme. It, but you can make all the models on data you want. But if nobody understands what you're talking about, you can just lie to them and tell them exactly what they want to hear. And they'll do it. They'll follow it because they want to hear shit. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear what confirms their biases, what gets them money. And that's, ouch. That, that's just how it is. Um, so the truth, uh, often, you know, have a bar, have a bar chart, have a pie chart. You know what I mean? Have a, have an architectural diagram that's like, oh, this component links to this component and it's great. And we can argue all the, all we want about how we're going to divide up the work of actually like uh, the functionality that we want to build. It's like, does this developer do it? Does my developer do it? What are we doing? All sorts of fun. I know, right? You ever heard of systems engineering? Unfortunately. 
Yeah, that's the that's the world I've gotten roped into. I am it's so like, sorry. We're basically like designing design systems from scratch before even a single right line of code is written and just being like, yeah, we, we've got an architecture here. This kind of works. Like in This way we can come up with use cases yeah. and stakeholders and stuff. But at the end of the day, someone's got to write the code. Well, uh, ho- yeah. I was going to say, like, hopefully smart people write the fucking code because uh, as people learn all day, every day when they work for these companies, um, why do I have to do this project? Oh, because some fucking idiot from the prior iteration of this project said uh, do it this way. And we coded this ad hoc bullshit, and uh, it doesn't work because it's made of lies. Oof! It's made of it's made of people who uh, went to Georgia instead of tech. It's actually funny. I got a weird story from work. It was like we tried yeah. to build a we tried to build an architecture. We want to build a bunch of micro uh, microservices and just like have a common service layer for a bunch of apps that we want to host for uh, for, for for some uh, workload big data workload processing that we wanted to do. It didn't work out because, like, we couldn't handle, they couldn't handle the applications that were going to get done, so we had to rehost the applications elsewhere, and we had to rework all of our data flows. It was a pain in the ass. Yeah, because you have no fucking idea what you're doing at your company. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's just, all, all these companies, and, like, the startup I mean, model, you're right. the startup model that we had would have been better, but they just sold out to big business. You know what I mean? And that's your company. I'm, it's like, wasn't it, did it start as a startup? Oh, I don't work at the company that developed this thing. Oh, I better. work, I work uh, for for a, a company that was uh, brought in to like. So you you know I work in FF40C, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, what? Now? I work at uh, FF40C, uh, Federally Funded Research and Development Center. Oh, very cool. So we were actually working with uh, with a customer that was trying to field this capability. Huh. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, so um, fun times. I don't think your customer knew what the fuck he was doing, and I don't think the uh, FFRDC, uh, I don't think they know what they're doing either. Uh, that's the impression that I got from a quick Google search. Well, we're not the ones that propose the architecture, though. Um, now, we oh, did say, not. like, we've got, um, like, old applications that do this same kind of stuff, but it's, like, it's not in the cloud. We're trying to move to the cloud. I mean, yeah, because it's something like that. It's a whole, it's a whole thing and a half. Uh, yeah, the cloud. Uh, just dump everything and on the cloud. Been. What is that? A larger server. It's I cloud. mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Did, not did you hear, uh, did you hear the interview that, uh, uh some, uh, I think, I think it was uh, Vice President Harris. It was like, all of your data is up there. Uh, yes, it's in, in space. Um, the. <laughs> we wish it was literally in space. Well, oh, it literally is. Um, Madam Vice President is, uh, well, a terribly retarded individual who doesn't understand what a price ceiling is or what money is, but she needs more of it. And, um, that is, I, again, like, Facebook and and Twitter and uh, TikTok, unfortunately, because they're a Chinese app, they're Chinese compromise. And uh, you know, fucking uh, YouTube, Google, which is all back to Alphabet and shit. Um, these people routinely buy congressmen, and mm-hmm. then have no idea that the congressmen don't know what a computer is. Oh, do they now? Fuck no, they're stupid. They are on retard in 24-7. They, the problem is there, there's routine violation of your Fourth Amendment rights and your basic common decency and sanity by stupid people who want more money and don't know how to purchase it properly. That's, so that's, so you, you say the thing about congressmen not being as technologically illiterate. Um, in, I think this was would have been 2000 – let me do the math here – 2011 or 2012 – I want to say 2011. Yep. Um, the Stop Online Piracy Act. Look it up. Oh, SOPA. I remember SOPA. That was a fucking meme and a half. Yes, it was. The Khan Academy even did an act on it. Did a, did a video on it. It was because, about this whole thing about, like, what is a site that is dedicated to the theft of intellectual property? You can what does that even mean? Like that. Yeah, but now, fortunately, even if SOPA, uh, SOPA, if passed, in the original form, 
would not have fucking done a thing because how do you police the internet, right? It's Google fucking the algorithms. So you buy sure. Google or you control Google for the state after they got massive TDS. And uh, that's how you control the content flow. But you can't, you're not going to make a, you're not going to legislate Google's algorithm to your liking because Google will simply change it. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. You have no, you have no shot of doing something like that. Yeah, Sofa was a nice meme. Uh, people were concerned over it and it never really mattered for much of anything. I mean, it died. It died and I don't even know if it was brought to it was a vote. after that too. That was a, that was, that was the Senate. That was in the <laughs> Senate, I think. I, no. No, it wasn't. I think it was the House. But it would have made it to the Senate, and the Senators would have been so on glitching that it wouldn't have mattered. Mm. I mean, if you, 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 when's the last time, uh, was it Senator Paul or somebody got on the fucking, uh, the Senate floor and asked everybody, do you know what a website is? Do you know what a search is? Do you know where your data are stored? Or is stored, frankly, if you would like to hear it that way. And the answer overwhelmingly is fuck no. But they'll they'll spit out some uh, half baked propaganda from their other donors. Like, oh my god, if they ask you this, say this. It's like, do you know out. how your computer actually knows where Google.com is? Oh fuck no, absolutely not. In fact, I don't. Funny, I haven't actually I, do. I didn't. Uh, huh? Funny because I actually kind of do. Oh, I'm sure you know. Um, I, I don't know the exact, like, guts of how each search algorithm works. Like, there's, uh, there's, um, how it inter- how it connects and how it interfaces with the server. Um, I, I'd never studied, like, um, servers. There's, there's a specific, yeah. what's that branch of CompSci? Uh, networking. Net- networking, but like network engineering, network something else as well. Um, look up DNS. That's what, there we go. That's, that, that's, that's what, what it I was is. looking for. Um, I never studied that shit. Um, I, I was told by other techies that it was a fucking disaster and don't look at it. Um, so I took them seriously because they were actually making products of value. Uh-huh. And, uh, but anyway. Yeah, so like there's DNS, there's like address resolution protocol, there's border gateway protocol, there's a bunch of different protocols that you're supposed to be able, that are supposed to help you like route traffic from one computer to another. Uh, that we basically just take for granted unless you open up a wire shark and you're literally just looking at the packet flow or you even care to do that. Uh, precious few people. Fair enough. But thankfully, because, uh, considering the, uh, <clears throat> cyber security protocols that I don't have to say anything further because you work that shit. Um, yes. I mean, hacking hard, like, Hardware hacking, if you will, is even fucking easier than the software that they don't. What's a script? You know what I mean? Like, what's sure. uh, do I USB into your fucking network? Fuck no, I hack it through the Wi-Fi, which means I connect, I fish your password, which is trivial, and I'm in. It's like you'd be you'd be surprised how many people fall for the. Uh, what is it? You need to reset your password. Please go to Bank of America, but, but it's <laughs> A N. What is it? N. Yeah, yeah. Fucking uh, go, go to the R- website. Uh, here's an input no, it's box. RN. Here's an input box. Would you like to give us your password, please, so that yeah. we can uh, access your server? And they will. They give you shit. Now, thankfully, that is a minority of people, but it is a frighteningly high proportion of people that would do that. Does your uh, Does your company do the phishing exercises? Um, when I worked for them, they did yes, and they were totally useless. Why? Why do you think that? Because people who are too stupid to fall for, you know, who are stupid enough to fall for uh, phishing scams, um, <laughs> they, uh, they're not going to remember the phishing lesson. I'll put it that way. So they're going to have that exercise, forget they had the fucking exercise, go back to whatever, you know, humdrum, tedious bullshit they're working on. And then, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, man, you hate to see it. Although, I will say, to get back to the whole thing, it's like, I will, actually, did you hear there's a lawsuit against Georgia Tech for their shitty cybersecurity practices? Huh? Wait, there is a lawsuit, but it's not for cybersecurity, is it? Or not cybersecurity, data privacy. 
because of the the breaches is like the whole like Georgian Even, Tech and Will situation. I think oh it was. God. I, I don't know so how all that, students data dot XLSX. Oh, I remember that. Yes, 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 yes. I remember that now. <laughs> uh, that was funny. Um, I mean, the, it's it's that easy to hack something. It, it's never it's never that fucking hard. By the way, um, the um, there are ways. I'll put it this way: of telling that ooh. This server sucks. These people are fucking stupid, shitty people who are evil, and uh, you can manipulate the shit out of them, and they just give you shit, let alone hacking their shit. But uh, you know, I forget. Is, is there's a there's something with the like the whole Epstein server? Like the people like the FBI put a whole oh, bunch yeah. of Epstein shit on the server, and they're just like, I'll just walk into the server and grab it for free. That kind of thing. Cybersecurity. That's children who were fucking raped, dude. Like, thankfully their names were in that fucking list, but you know. What about the perpetrators? Oh, the list is the list, too, list right? is horribly fake. It's just you know, it's fake in a particular way. All the people on that, almost all the people I think on that list, um, are dog shit. A lot of them aren't actually pedophiles. the The rest of the pedophiles are connected to the people on the list, and there are actual pedophiles on that list. Plenty. Oh boy. Oh yeah, the the uh, well, the child rape networks used to be. Worse than they are now. I'll put it that way. Thank God, because they they were they were something else. Have you? Do you listen to Darknet Diaries at all? No, but I've heard of uh, I've heard of that. Is that like a? That's a channel, right? It's a it's a podcast on Spotify. There's you, actually yeah. uh, I don't know. I just know they have a Spotify podcast oh. and they have an Instagram account. Oh, okay. Um, one of their episodes dealt with. Uh, a, a pedophile ring, or at least a pedophile, uh, like a a CP website. Uh, one of those like dot uh, dot onions or something else. I think it's dot onion. Yeah. yeah. So it'd be like a dot onion uh, ring or some shit. Yeah, that that happens. But the thing about like the 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 thing about like the dark web is no one uses it. Not even criminals, because criminals are too retarded to use the fucking dark web, and. Uh, Mm-hmm. Like the, the the like you can go on Facebook or Instagram and ask somebody, do you have you know cheese pizza or some shit? If and if you take a wild guess, wink wink, and know what you're looking at, oh that one's a pedophile. I bet I can you know do with that. Or if you're like rich as fucking on the Epstein list, uh, you know uh-huh. you're. Uh, it's called Welcome to Video. The the um. The, the the podcast the the episode it's about how they broke up this website using cryptocurrency of all things. <laughs> Fuck no, hell no. Uh, crypto is a, one of the funniest memes the last of the 21st century. I'd say. Um, let's have a fake money that is generated from nothing, that is literal fiat currency if it were to work, um, and convince people that it's real. And it's almost as fake as the U.S. dollar. But, well, you know, shit. I mean, listen, just can we advance tech? Like, I hope we can advance tech enough to where we could have an AI call call a football game for us. Oh, hell yeah. One of these well, days. it'd replace some of the announcers, yeah. Uh, but uh, technology Oh, I meant, like, play calling. Not oh, AI like, like commentating. Yeah. Yes. Well, fuck, it'd be better than like most of the college coaches and like three fourths of the NFL coaches that get fired every year anyway. Because I can't be any worse than Matt Canada or Dave Patnode, Am I right? Oh, or Arthur Jesus Smith? Christ, I don't know. Oof, Arthur Smith. There's a name for you. Uh, there is a name that uh, will probably be forgotten for his uh, dreadful sort of mismanaging of a sort of curse team on a sort of important year for reasons, and then the quarterback sucks. So it didn't matter anyway. Um, I just remember losing it when we drafted Michael Penix Jr. and just rolling on the floor laughing. What? Did you have any updates on that? Like, what the? Where the fuck is Penix? He is the second string quarterback behind Kirk Cousins. Uh, but he did play in a preseason game. He had all of like two drives and he looked pretty good. Um, but then he sat for the rest of the preseason. Wow. And then uh, they ran Taylor Heineke out there to suck. 
it, it was bad. It, yeah, I caught some of the preseason highlights. I'm just thinking like, mm, like the Broncos are fucked this year. Uh, uh, fucking uh, Jaden Daniels guy. is gonna die. Oh, it's it's Washington. Of course, he's going to die. They're full of criminals and curses and shit. Um. I would not be surprised there's an ancient alien temple nearby literally fucking with their heads or some shit. Caleb Williams could do something. Caleb Williams? Yeah, the Bears might have young interest in this year, I think. Uh, yeah. They're, uh... Drake I, I, May I, is I, not starting for the Patriots. Nigga, what the fuck? Huh? No, what? He went with Jacoby Brissett! Huh? There's no way, right? Don't ask. There's no fucking way. Hang on, let me Google this shit. I'm going to Google this shit right now. <laughs> oh, my God, he's getting fired after this season, then. What the fuck? <laughs> hang on a sec. Uh, it's retarded. Uh, I don't know uh, what's worse. Drafting Michael Penix Jr. to basically ride the bench for four years after his fifth, and then maybe pick up his fifth-year option to get, like, one year of starting production, or signing Kirk Cousins... To be a hundred million dollar a year, actually not a hundred million dollar a year, twenty five million dollar per year, or something like that. Quarterbacks coach. Okay, um, Christ, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it, fuck, Kirk is the best quarterback we've had by a landslide since Matt Ryan. So you know, I'll take Aww. paying money for. I know, right? I'll take paying money for uh, you know competency. I would love to have Matt Ryan back as a quarterbacks coach. Oh, holy shit, he'd be way the fuck better as a coach than, you know, overwhelming majority of anybody who's ever done it, but, you know, I'm 28 to 3, so let's put him on a suit in a fucking booth somewhere and just Ouch. use the shit. Waste of oh, talent. Yeah. Waste we of did talent. it again. We iced Daniel out of the podcast. My God. Go ahead. Go ahead. Talk about... Watch <laughs> sports, play the lottery. I'm sorry, what? Now? Spend money, obey. I, I swear, like the advertising is. Ads have gotten like incrementally shittier and shittier and shittier. I was watching last year. I was watching the uh, uh, Dan Marino Super Bowl against the 49ers. I was like, dude, these ads are fucking cool. It's it's obvious, like literal, like druggy propaganda like it attacks like it literally attacks like your fucking drug addictions and shit like your dopamine addictions but you mean your gambling cool. addiction your dopamine addiction yes um or dopamine as some of us call it sometimes um but um what happens is that commercials or those commercials rather way the fuck better than everything that's come after Dude, do you remember when uh, What's Up was the meme? I remember when Vine was the thing, too, briefly. Like, Vine was better anyway. What's just, up? What's up? Oh, I'm referring to the uh, Bud Light commercial. Or was it Bud Weiser? A uh, pit of misery! Dilly dilly! Oh, God. That was fun. Yeah, and then there was the What's Up? Just watching the game, having a Bud. True. Oh, my God. What's up? What's up, dude? Why can't we legalize this drug? We can legalize the other ones. Oh, yeah, I'm forgetting his drug. Yeah. But, yeah, like, ads these, ads lately are kind of suck. It's like, you got to get an ad, it's like, you got to get an ad blocker just for YouTube, and they'll try to ban, they'll try to, like, stop you from using it. Oh, of course, and they shadow ban all your content, and it, it, you don't even have to shadow ban anymore. It's all bots, 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 bots. Do oh, you God. look at the, you could, like, any YouTube comments anymore? No, uh, sometimes. Because, like, 10, 12 years ago, I loved the YouTube comment sections. There were actual, like, on certain videos, I should say, there were either funny shit, there's either funny shit or, like, legitimate conversation happening. And because it wasn't this fucking, like, ADHD, um, character limited, uh, seven second, you know, wannabe seven second fucking product, TikTok, mm -hmm. you could actually have a fucking conversation with somebody who was real. And Rest usually in peace strained. to TikTok usually. shorts. Or Ugh. YouTube shorts. Oh, well, they're gone? No, they're still around. So I should say rest in peace our attention spans. Oh, oh, please. But it's it's best to be off their screens anyway. 
Um, I, I mean, like, where we've been rambling for a, a, almost an hour. Right. But, like, this is a real human conversation. Like, yes. you can't, when you have that many fucking bots in the way, good luck. Because it's all bots. I, what, because it's fucking, it, it's everyone's favorite election season, the one that's already over before it started. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, now, front page of your thing is like, Watch this orange meme and look at this pantsuit and ultimately look at what we want you to believe, which is we forgot to. Because the news now is funny, silly propagandists at the top lying to people. There is a uh, there are a few Calvin and Hobbes scripts that may comics that may have uh, called it. There's like one about. Um, where Calvin talks about, um, the basically politics becoming like theater or a like perf- a performative art. Yes. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find it. There's a, uh, it's like, he's talking about how politics is like a horse race or something like that. I'm I, well, politics boils down to it's the economy, stupid, and the senators are the fucking, uh, well, the stocks. Okay, I found it. I like following the news. News organizations know I won't sit still for any serious discussion of complex or boring issues. They give me what I want. Antics, emotional confrontations, soundbites, scandals, sob stories, and popularity polls. All packaged as a soap opera in a horse race. It's very uh, entertaining. Have you have you seen any of you know? Hey, data nerds, rise up! Have you seen the polling this election cycle at all? It's it seems like a mess. It's like oh, the oh, one poll mess. will say Trump is leading everywhere. One poll will say Harris is leading everywhere. I think but, like but the real clear politics average is supposed to like aggregate everything and be like. Even uh-huh. then, it's still skewed by like all a the handful shit. of like push polls. All I believe what you're ta- yeah. Oh, oh, Anoush, get ready for this. Yeah. All of it, without exception, is fake. Every last one. I did projects on this. It's all fake. Every last poll is fake. Without uh-huh. exception. Now, at least. Maybe in the past. I don't know about that. But when you're aggregating fake data, your models, you know, garbage in, garbage out. That's what we were taught, right? So. Yes. All your polling. I'll give you an example. Trump got shot in Pennsylvania. That's going to change your polling. Oh God! Guess that what was, happened? Yeah. Trump it did? got shot. Uh, Biden was. Oh, I think Biden was still. I don't remember. But Trump got shot, and so he naturally is leading in the polls. Yes. Kamala Harris, barely even a fucking week later. Barely becomes the become she is now this is an eleven point swing. Uh, which one was it? Harris was up eleven points immediately on entering the race in Michigan, in a fucking swing state. Eleven points after Biden was losing to Trump there in a week for a person who couldn't win California back in any primary ever. Ooh. What the fuck are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> So obvious retarded fake shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why we like people do pull it. I think he might have been onto something in 2016 Trump when he was like yeah, he he liked to disregard the polls. Oh yes. And They're I mean fake. it paid off. He won. Yes. Um and this is for any candidate really regardless of your whatever. I mean it, it, it's best to quite literally ignore the quote unquote polling because, and if you notice this, you'll, you'll watch an image, you'll see an image of the, uh, polling because the news, all the news agencies, you gotta show the polls, you gotta show the, yes. it's, their, it's their news programming. Uh, it's either like a Fox poll. News poll or a Harvard Harris poll or like right, political, or you real go, poll. Or, yeah, oh, you go, there's one for you. Uh, in this show. Um, all this show. I think, I think most people would like to use the real clear politics average just to be like, right. And I aggregate well, that, everything. And that's natural. The problem is, you know, if they're average, it's averaging fake shit now. That's the problem. 
so the the news agencies, if you look at what they do, it's always here's the numbers: fifty eight, forty nine, fifty eight, forty nine, forty nine, forty eight, forty nine. Margin 50, of error. Margin of error, like should be like twenty five, but no, it's like point uh, five or whatever the fuck. So it's very tightly skewed, or rather, well, something truthful came out there. Uh, very tightly distributed around the mean. Um, and it's, something, something, registered voters, likely voters. Right, like likely voter, registered voter. What did you sample? You went to a university somewhere if you ever went there and just get a skewed sample. Or, you know, you just make shit up for the news story. And then you dump it and you recycle it and you recycle the image, but you flip the numbers around a little bit. And that's the polling on, like, especially, like, MSNBC. Holy shit, MSNBC is a disaster. It's funny. And then they talk about, like, how... Well, we want our candidate to win. Can you take a guess who that is? Because we don't remember either. Because some of them will say, Joe Biden will win in November. Again. I'm like, are you serious? Did you say that live on air? Yes. Was this before or after that debate? After after Biden said he was dropping the fuck out. Uh, Biden is going to win. Biden is your president. Right? Fuck no. But he's there sometimes. Objective reporting. He's on, he's on vacation or something is what I heard. <laughs> he, uh, that's about as real as his obviously fabricated fucking COVID diagnosis. Is that what it was? He got COVID for two minutes, literally. And then he, like, he's been so fucked up in his brain for so many years now. That's what that, like, all of his symptoms are neurologic. He's dying. He's old. He's a sick, evil piece of shit. And that's manifesting in his in literal neurologic problems. So anything tr- like they didn't even have it like it's just straight up fake shit. When, when was the last time anybody you knew got COVID? Like two years ago, maybe. Oh yeah, actually, um, funny you should mention that. I I had about a COVID around that time. Uh, it was not. It was not pretty. Was it COVID um, or pa- something? It, it was. So I. I, I woke up in the middle of the night with a fever, and oh, okay. I basically, like, grabbed some bounty, and grabbed a bounty, soaked it in water, left it in the freezer for a little bit, and then tried to go back to sleep with it on my, sh- and, uh, like, I periodically, like, get up, do the thing again. In the morning, I got tested, and they said, yeah, you're COVID positive. We can give you Paxlovid. What the fuck are they talking this was, about? This was after I'd gotten, this was uh, after, I, and I had already gotten vaccinated at the time. So it could have been worse. So maybe it could have been worse. So but, there's like, no way that was COVID. There was no fucking way that was COVID because you got vaccinated, right? Yeah. Well, it could have been COVID. You never know. Uh, but well, like the the test said it was COVID. They gave me Paxlovid and I kicked it in like a week, uh, in, like right, right, right. five days after I after I got on the Paxlovid. Well, I'm glad it didn't damage you or anything severely, but then again, you know, yeah. the chems and the uh, disease, if you're healthy and, you know, especially if you're, uh, you know, sound of mind, you're fine. So far, so good. Yeah, but, like, since then, I haven't, I can't say I've actually had it. Uh, the worst maybe I've had is, like, maybe just the odd allergy breakout, and that's, um, the odd allergy, by the way, it's uh, you have a neuro in your brain. You have a neurotransmitter called histamine, and histamine ah. histamine cycles throughout your entire body. It it uh, propagates or it, it generates your immune, some of your immune responses, and especially your allergic reactions. Right? Yep. So you have like antihistamines that knock down your uh, your swelling in your nose or something like that. Um, yeah. You can actually have brain stimulation in areas of your brain to release uh, histamine that will give you allergy-like symptoms. These, you think of it like, uh, I mean, if you, if you think, there's there's some strange shit. I, I don't know if you've, like, felt this or been aware of this. There's, there's strange shit going on in the world right now. And I'll be honest with you, I've had, like, brief bouts of allergies for like 30 seconds and i used to have like some allergies and shit 
So I'm like, I'm having allergies again. And I figured out it was my brain. And I don't know exactly why, but I'm pretty sure that, I, 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 you know, all the fucking like medicine is a disaster after COVID, right? It's, it's just the you prescribe pills and don't think about it. But mm-hmm. you need to look into the fact that if there's stimulation in your brain, you're going to have responses. So how are our brains being stimulated? Right. And I think, you know, like allergies, I think that's literally like a psychosomatic thing where you see it. You have a neural stimulus from something you interact with and that gives you an allergy. And doctors misdiagnose that. Well, you're allergic to like the fucking mold in the air that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? I will say, um, so. I've I got my I suffered my like first anaphylactic outbreak when I was really young. But since then, I haven't had any issues. Most of it, I think, is because I've been, like, really careful. But yeah, I and think a like, good chunk of it is also maybe I've got develop, maybe I'm developing a tolerance or something. No, I think you're just healthy, right? Like, you're healthy, you work out, you're happy, optimistic sure. for the most part. And so that Thanks. all matters. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um that matters and keeps you healthy. And there's, you know, I like you're not it, unless you have like some rare genetic shit. Like most people really aren't that prone to allergies, but they're often misdiagnosed as, oh, you have seasonal allergies. You know what I mean, fuck no, you don't. You have <laughs> other shit that's happening. You know, your mental is off a little bit today or shit like that. But that's got to be that's got to be a diagnosis for somebody to give you a pill. Funny, because I am susceptible to seasonal allergies. <sighs> I. Uh, maybe maybe a little bit susceptible, but uh, at the most, um, it's cause I just say this because my mom and she's worked in medicine for years, and she used to bitch at me as a child about how a lot of fucking shit's misdiagnosed, a lot of shit is misunderstood. Um, don't worry about your allergies. Worry less about everything, and then your health gets better, and you mm-hmm. stop uh, you stop worrying about uh, you, you stop worrying about shit. That's, that's the key. And I think, I think honestly, like a lot of people are anxious over thoughts. Like I'm, I'm susceptible to disease. I'm weak, right? I'm, uh, I, oh my God, it's spring. I'm going to get sick as a dog this year. I did that shit like two years ago. I was like, what if I think this year I'm not going to get sick? I'm healthier than I was last year. You know what I mean? And I, and let me pay attention. I'm like, fuck, I didn't get allergies this year in this heavily allergen town, like high allergen count on the weather channel. Bullshit. Right? My life is better. My mental is better. That's a fair point. Um, I don't actually, since I moved to Virginia, I don't know if I think I don't think my seasonal allergies have been that bad. Um, so so far so good. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, it's and I think listen, I used to be a really cynical guy, and now, like I said, over the past two years, I've just it's a lot it's a lot more positive and i think our outlook on society is uh it's influencing that right i think people when you think positively and it's like i'm going to think positively the other day right i do this all the time it's like an exercise i will literally like think positive thoughts to other people and i think there's there's truth to that right i think there's there's truth to we can make the world around us better with our minds, and then everything flows from that. I used to not believe that hardly at all. No. Huge, huge difference in my uh, perception of reality. And then I realized, okay, things are getting better, especially for good people, right? It's it's really how do you get how do you get the most for the most people, and that that's a whole other uh topic but and you're talking about like going into uh work basically working with people daily like you know more of a people oriented career sure. i guess i want i wanted the same thing uh, that's one of the reasons i quit my job uh the last one um uh-huh. so it, positive thoughts to people really important positive thoughts actually in location like if you ever like go to a location and all of a sudden your thoughts are shitty and dark it's not you right that's what I learned. That's a that's a creepy thing I learned a long time ago. 
if you get in dark thoughts of the building, you get in dark thought, like you're walking down the street, everything's good. I got dark, shitty thoughts. It's from somewhere else. Cause, uh, you know, it's just, it's like, wait a minute. I'm healthy. I'm fine. Why the fuck am I getting dark shut? And positive thoughts are absolutely going to be, uh, you know, from you or, you know, I'm, I'm going to assume people looking outward. Uh, that's how I'd like to look at it. Yeah, that's the whole thing about he radiates positive energy or he radiates negative energy or this yeah. place is... Oh, my God. You can tell. After a while, you get to tell, like, you take one look at a guy and, like, oh, Jesus Christ, you're sick and you're evil and fucked up. Stay <laughs> the fuck away or uh, fuck with him. I like fucking with people occasionally. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, well, people who radiate uh, negativity are uh, oftentimes fun to fuck with. Uh, I'm going to leave it at that. All right. I can see it. <laughs> Hopefully, we, at least for the football team, we keep the positive vibes going, especially Hell in yeah. the trap game. You could, trap or, game. you could argue, you could argue it's a trap game. I'm just saying, we already lost to Bowling Green once. What, what was it like the first year of Jeff Collins? We lost that FCS team. We lost to the Citadel. I was at that the game. Citadel, yeah. Steelix was at that game too. And like I walked in, I was like, what the hell what what was that? I was like, what? Yeah, I don't know. The tempo game was worse. We only scored a safety. Yeah. Jeff I just remember you going off on a rant in, in my in my DMs after Virginia Tech. <laughs> oh my god, I don't I probably did. Uh Oh, I know you my did. Several. One of my several. It's like, oh my god, we're fucked. We're ter- Life is terrible and we're dying. And our football team sucks. Anyway. Remember uh, that one only- time you went off on a rant while doing the NIU game and you were like, do we even practice? Turns out you might have been on to something. Yeah, I don't... I don't remember that. Do we even practice sounds just about right. Um, I don't think we practiced all that much under Jeff. Well... According to this one article in the AJC, apparently they didn't. Oh, the AJC. And yes, they're probably right on that. Kind of hard to fuck that one up. But yeah, no. God God bless Brent Key. I know people want to, probably wanted Willie Fritz or Jamie Chadwell as their head coach. I will say I would have loved to have Jamie Chadwell as our head coach. <laughs> Meh. I think Key is better. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, look at our recruiting class this year that we're working on. Significantly better, yes. We even got a we even got a five-star. Oh, really? Yeah, jo- Josh Petty is uh, considered a five-star by a few recruiting services. Okay. Interesting. That's uh sound of the times, I think. Yeah, we even got a guy. We even flipped a guy from UGA after we beat FSU. No shit, we did. Christian Garrett. Oh, really? He's a yeah. He's a four star DT. Oh shit! It's like we got so we got like three four star offensive linemen currently in this class. He would like to be a starter, as opposed to burying the depth uh, behind a bunch of uh, literal criminals. Something like that. Yes, if you want, if you ever want criminals for a position on a football team, it's going to be in the trenches, mainly on defense. What about a wide receiver? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, they're usually weird and uh, all kinds of drugs. Oof. But yeah, so we've got. Okay, so I'm using on three for this, but. Let's see. Our, of our top recruits, okay. So our highest recruit is is a, is an interior is an offensive lineman. Then you got a defensive lineman. You got a cornerback, and then you got another offensive lineman and another offensive lineman, and then you got a safety, and then you got a wide receiver. So yeah, three of our like four of our. The four of, like the and some of like four of the top five recruits that we have are in the trenches. Very nice. You'll love to, you'll love to see it. Well, fuck with the defense that can tackle. Why need it AT? Speaking of which, did you like we 
our defensive line might be good this year? Um, better than average. I mean, we already know our offensive line's pretty damn good, so. Yeah. Better than it used to be. Yeah. The, which gets me thinking, do you think Jeep Wade's gonna get poached? I have this feeling Wait, Jeep Wade are, Jeep Wade is the offensive line coach. Him and Buster, uh, him or Buster Faulkner could get coached, get poached like next year. Possibly, but the the position coaches for like Georgia Tech, unless we make a bowl game, probably not. At at most, the AC or, or rather OC or DC. So, I mean, we did ex- we did just like recently extend Buster Faulkner, so I shouldn't be worried, but I am. But yeah, looking forward to tomorrow's game under the lights of Bobby Dodd. I'll have my trumpet in hand in the middle of the night, probably hopefully uh, busting out the fight songs after a victory. Yay. I haven't gotten any noise complaints yet. Uh, they're not going to. I don't think they hear you anyway. Who the hell knows? I don't even know how thin these walls are, although during COVID, I would sometimes get woken up by kids jumping on the, uh, jumping in the apartment above me. Huh? Oh, this is during COVID, so it is what it is. But yeah, that was a thing. Interesting. I don't think it was kids. But anyway. That was fun. Another classic, another classic mega episode. You love to see it. Um, anything from our uh, our illustrious host? How, how are you doing, Daniel? Are you alive? 